In today's video, we are talking Harman mutes and microphone technique. What's going on? My name is Josh Rezepka, and today is Mute Monday. If you're new around here, welcome. Mute Monday is the only weekly series on YouTube focused on trumpet mutes. In today's video, I am talking about something which I don't hear mentioned all that often, and that is how to get that classic sound from your Harman mute uh, when you're playing into a microphone. And that classic sound, I mean, that sound that we all heard growing up, Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, and they had a specific technique that they used when they used a Harman mute with a microphone. Furthermore, they used a specific type of mute. Now, there are three things that we really gotta keep in mind when we are playing muted on a gig, particularly with a Harman mute. The first one is we wanna make sure we're using the right type of Harman mute because some Harman mutes are particularly well suited for playing into a microphone and some of them, they really do not sound good on a microphone. They are built more for projecting into the audience. So we're gonna talk mutes first, and then we are going to talk technique. And what I mean by that is, you wanna approach playing with a Harman mute in a certain way, and that's gonna help you get that classic sound that you're looking for. And the third thing is microphone technique. You've gotta set the microphone up and be a certain distance from it if you really wanna get that sound. So I'm gonna cover all this in this video, and we are starting first with Harman mutes. Which type of Harman mute should you use if you're playing directly into a microphone? For me, I like to look backwards to the masters, to all of those classic recordings by Miles Davis, by Dizzy Gillespie, where they are playing Harman mute. For me, that's where I shaped my ear. That's where I really got that sound of the Harman mute ingrained in my musical mind, and that's what I'm trying to emulate. Naturally, it would make sense that I would wanna use the same mutes that Miles and Dizzy used. This right here, this is one of those old Harman mutes. It is stamped 1925. I've talked about this vintage Harman mute in a couple different videos, and this is my go-to mute if I'm playing into a microphone. And it's because of the balance of the sound, the balance between the highs and the lows, and the projection when you're playing soft. That is an important thing, the projection and response when you're playing soft, because as you're gonna learn in just a few minutes, when we are using a Harman mute, we're gonna be right up on the microphone. We're gonna be really close to the microphone. And I'm gonna demonstrate actually two different microphones. One's going to be my Rode NT1A, and then I'm also gonna use a Shure clip-on microphone. So of course there are other great mutes to use besides a vintage Harman mute. Uh, some of them are easy to find, some of them are really hard to find. Uh, of course the Bobby Shoe Soloist, this is a popular one with a lot of people. This was specifically designed to be used with a microphone and to be able to play close into a microphone to get that classic sound. And of course, if if you're trying to recreate what Dizzy was doing, you've got to get one of the Yulvin copper mutes. His were copper and they were chrome plated. Uh, this one right here was not chrome plated, but uh, it's the same model that he used. Although this mute is really heavy and it is made out of copper, it doesn't play and project the same way uh, that so many other copper Harman mutes do. A lot of the copper Harman mutes, they are heavy and they really project and they really buzz a lot. And this one is really very well suited for playing right into a microphone. Remember, if you're playing right into a mic, you don't need to project. You don't need to have that loud buzz that carries and carries. You want a nice, big, full buzz, but you also want a nice hum, a nice chord of the sound that's really kind of filling up that note. And that is really hard to get with some of the different mutes out there. Now, I'm not saying that any of the other mutes are bad, some mutes are exactly what you need if you are playing in a section, if you're playing in a big band, in an orchestra, and you need to project, and you don't have a microphone right in front of you. All right, let's talk microphone technique. Uh, right here, I've got my Rode NT1A, and I just pulled out this EV microphone, and then I've got my Shure clip-on microphone. Uh, first of all, you wanna get real close to the microphone. This is something my teacher, Kenny Davis, taught me. Uh, he plays almost exclusively in Harman mute. You wanna get your mute right up onto the microphone. And I mean close, look at that. It's like almost touching. You don't wanna bang it around, but you wanna get really close into the microphone. That's the same thing with this clip-on microphone. Uh, personally, I like this clip-on microphone the most because I can set it at a distance from my Harman mute and then no matter how I move around, it's at that same distance. That really helps and alleviates so many problems with volume and, and kind of cutting in and out. Of course, with a microphone like this, you can be a little bit further away uh, because it's gonna be more sensitive. And depending on what type of harmony you have, if you don't have one of these old classic ones, you may actually need to adjust the EQ. And you may have to have someone on the soundboard change the EQ. 
uh, just so that you don't get too bright of a sound. And that's something that you may run into if you're using some of the copper mutes, some of the ones that really have a very strong buzz and project so much. Uh, there's gonna be so many highs in the sound. So what my teacher Kenny taught me was, uh, you wanna take your mixer and you wanna take the highs and you wanna turn them down a whole bunch and you wanna take the lows and you wanna kinda turn those up and that is gonna help you uh, kind of dial that Harman mute sound in. I find with these classic Harmons, with the ones that are stamped 1925, uh, oftentimes I don't have to touch the EQ at all. And that's why I love them so much because if you're playing a gig and you're going from mute uh, to open, you don't, you don't have the option. You don't want someone having to change dials unless you have the luxury of having separate microphones that can be EQ'd differently. Uh, one for open horn and one for harmon mute. But I find the best strategy is just to find a mute that sounds the way you want it to sound on a microphone. That's really what got me started into this whole mute business. I was looking for the right harmon mute to use on gigs and I was buying dozens of them until I came across these vintage harmon mutes. So you've got that microphone technique dialed in, uh, you, you're staying real close to it, you're, you're maintaining the same distance and now we've got to talk about playing technique, how you gotta play if you really wanna get that classic sound. Now here's what I've learned. When you're playing into a microphone with your Harman mute, uh, you don't wanna blast. You don't wanna play too loud because the louder you play uh, with a Harman mute, the more buzzy it gets and then the brighter it gets. We wanna have that nice warm sound with our Harman mute. The only way we can really do that is if you back off. Don't play too loud. Let the microphone do the work. Wherever you're playing, you're gonna be amplified. You're playing into a microphone and it's not the sound that's coming out of the mute that everyone's gonna be hearing in the club or the concert hall. They're gonna be hearing the sound coming out of the speakers. So you don't have to worry about blasting and projecting. You just gotta worry about playing uh, with a nice, beautiful, warm sound and getting around the horn. As long as you can get your response, as long as you can get that, that, that response and articulation and you can move around and play your lines, well, then you are doing it right. And I think that's something that Bobby Shu talked about where uh, with the soloist mute, this is not a particularly loud mute. And this is a mute that allows you to play, you kind of just play nice and easy into it and it responds uh, so well throughout the registers. The same thing with this vintage uh, Harman mute and the same thing with the Yulvin. Uh, it's got a particular sound. This mute, uh, it sounds a certain way. It's not as loud, like I said, as so many other copper Harman mutes, but it works great into a microphone. And that's why Dizzy loved it so much. And if you watch the videos of Dizzy playing, you'll see he was playing with this mute really close to the microphones. He was like this far away from the microphone with the end of the mute. Look at videos of Miles playing. He is playing so close with his Harman mute. And that is how they achieve that sound. One last thing that you may want to consider, uh, when you are playing a Harman mute into a microphone, uh, if you have the ability, you may want to dial up the reverb just a little bit. That's something that I learned from my teacher and it makes such a big difference. Of course, you don't want to go crazy and just dial it up so much that it sounds like you're in a cathedral, but a little bit of reverb uh, can really help to smooth out the sound, particularly with all those highs. And it really just kind of uh, warms it up and, and gives you just a nice, nice uh, cushion that you can sit on and play. So that's something I'm gonna demonstrate. I'm gonna play a couple different things. Uh, I'll play a little further away from the mic and then I'll get right up into it. And then I'm gonna go get a different mute that isn't one of my favorite mutes uh, to play into a microphone. And I'm gonna demonstrate that so you hear how it is. And then I will try and dial it in to get that sound that I would have wanted to begin with if, if it was the right mute. And then I will uh, throw some reverb on there so you can just hear all the differences and what I do in order to get the sound that I want when I'm playing on a gig with a Harman mute. <laughs>
All right, so you just heard the Harman mutes and all those different demonstrations. And what did you think? Uh, this old Harman mute, this is my favorite vintage Harman mute that I've got. This is also stamped 1925. I think I've got five or six of these. And of all of them, this one has just got that sound. And then this modern copper bubble Harman mute, uh, could you hear how bright this was? I'm not saying that this is a bad mute. This is a great mute. If you are playing in a large ensemble, if you need to project, if you gotta be heard, if you are playing in a big band, this is the one you want. If you're playing in an orchestra or wind ensemble and you gotta project, you want a big heavy bubble mute like this because it projects on its own. But playing directly into a microphone, really close, it's not the sound you need. You need something that is a little more balanced, softer, less edge to it, less highs. That's why I advocate using these old vintage harmony mutes or something that's that's kind of light if you're playing right into a microphone. Uh, find one of those Bobby Shoe soloists if you can. Uh, they're really, really hard to find and they're really expensive. Otherwise, just go and experiment. Get some different harmon mutes. Get up close to that microphone and test and see how it works for you. Really, the only way that you can find what's gonna work best for you is by trying some different harmon mutes and some different microphones because you're gonna find out that different microphones, they respond differently and they sound a little bit different depending on what mute you're putting into it. So hopefully this helps you out and the next time you're recording or playing a gig, uh, you can just dial it in a little bit faster and get a sound that is closer to the sound you've got in your head. That's all we're ever looking for. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know. Leave a comment below, hit that like button and make sure you subscribe. I wanna thank you for checking out my video and if you wanna find out more about these vintage Harman mutes, then check out the video I made on them right here.